Hello, Epiphany. It's really nice to see you. I'm uh, talking to you from a different location. Uh, I'm out in Montana. Moved uh, offices from Seattle to Montana for a couple of days. Uh, and I miss being in Seattle. Yeah, and we're coming home soon. It's an important time in the life of our city. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of conversation about what it means to live in the kingdom of God. That's what this conversation is about. That's what we've been called to consider in, in, in a new way, an unveiling of a reality that has always been present but now is more apparent to more people. Maybe more apparent to you, certainly more apparent to me. And my heart is broken at what I've missed over time. We see a little bit of, of what that's like. Because uh, sometimes in the gospel, and we're going to get to it, nine, uh, chapter 9, verse 18 in the gospel of John. Sometimes you know what's right. You witness to the truth, and yet out of fear, out of pressure, you don't step up. Today we need to be people that step up. Uh, even uh, and, and so we're, we're going to get to this text. Last uh, Friday I asked you to witness to the person of Jesus Christ. Like be, be out there and, and, and make witness through your words and through the conversations that you have and through your very life to the person of Jesus Christ. And I hope you're doing so more and more and more by the actions and activities that you participate in. By the way, you talk to the people in, the, in your world. Let's get to John. Let's see what's happening. Remember, we meet the man who was born blind. And he, he meets Jesus and the disciples come to him and they say, Who sinned, Rabbi, this man or his parents? Jesus says, No one sinned. His life is for the glory of God. You know what I find beautiful? I find beautiful that your life is for the glory of God, just like this man's. And he was given his sight to see what God is doing in the world, just like you were given your sight to see what God is doing in the world. And yet, there's all sorts of controversy about this. You know, was he born blind? Wasn't he? Is this the man who used to beg because he was born blind? Is it not? Uh, because he can see and he was cured uh, on the Sabbath the day, does that mean that he is a sinner? Strange stuff, right? So this conversation comes up and the Pharisees invite the man who was born blind to come and to talk to them and they ask him questions and they say, Who was this man that healed you? And he said, It was a prophet. And that's where we're going to pick up here. Verse 18, chapter 9. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and they asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? And his parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. Who could, who could forget that? Who could forget their child? Who could forget that feeling that they must have had right when they saw that their son was born blind and what that would mean to his life? Can you imagine that by the random act of how one is born, their life would be surely impacted by the society in which they live? He was born blind and he would have no opportunity and it must have broken their hearts. But they continue on in verse 21. But we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. Maybe they didn't know how his eyes were opened, or maybe they did. Maybe they did not know who opened his eyes, or maybe they did, but they referred back to him. Ask him, how do we know? He will speak for himself. Verse 22. And the author tells us why they said this. There's no ambiguity around it. Verse 22. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confesses Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. 
Therefore his parents said, Ask him, he is of age. Maybe this is a more common than we would think, that people not willing to give up their station in life, not willing to give up their uh, position in the culture and in the community, out of relationship with someone else, even their son. What a challenge. It's worth considering, I guess, in our own lives. Are we willing to take the risk of stepping out of the area that gives us strength and security, power and prestige, to stand with someone else, someone that has been changed or transformed? That was the challenge put before these parents with their own son, and they chose to let him answer the questions. Have you ever been put in a position like that? To choose between a relationship that you had, personal and intimate, and the pressures of a group that is that you want to be part of? I have. Maybe you have as well. I offer that for your consideration until we meet again tomorrow. I love you. I miss you. I, I loved worshiping with you online. I hope you were there. If not, I encourage you to go and check out the service on YouTube. You are in my prayers for sure. Peace upon your souls.